This time on Pedalbox, we're paying a visit to Ignition Motorsport so I can put some lovely paint properly on these panels, courtesy of one of Colin's lovely new spray booths. Yep, and that means we can finally get on with rebuilding the front end of the car, including the shiny new bumper and grille that we found in the trunk. So these are all the panels that I took down to Ignition Motorsport to borrow Colin's spray booth. And originally he'd offered me use of his uh, inflatable one that he had outside, but because that had some stuff in it at the time, he very kindly let me use his big giant shiny new spray booth inside the workshop. And that's where we did all of these. So that meant we could put two pack hardener on with proper ventilation, everything. It's really, really good. So the finish is rock solid and it's much, much nicer than what I got on the bonnet, as you would expect for not using a rattle can and being out in the open air. So after a long summer of not having any cooperative weather, I've come down to Ignition Motorsport to where Colin has very kindly offered me use of one of his brand spanking new spray booths to put the Thunderbird panels in and actually get some paint on them so we can put them back on the car. Now as you've seen before, these have all been sanded, filled, prepped, everything I can possibly do. They just need a tiny little bit of work here and there, just needs to go over them and give them a quick wipe down where they've been in storage for a few weeks now. Everything else is wrapped up, so that should all be fine. It's just a quick lick over these two wings. We can get them in the spray booth, get some primer and then color on them, and they should look mint. So we've got all the panels rubbed down. I've just been using some of this 500 grit soft back. It's got like a foam on the back that goes onto the pad, which is really, really good. It takes out a lot of the, um, the imperfections, just smoothing over and it works really, really nicely. So once again, extremely grateful to Colin for loaning me some time in his brand spanking new uh, spray booth in order to get these done because the weather just hasn't been cooperating. It's either been too warm, too wet or too humid or all of the above. And uh, yeah, it's now really nice and it's about 23, 24 degrees, the sun's shining, there's no wind. So the one day that I'd arranged to come down here, it's now perfect to have done it at home. And I'm pretty sure these are gonna be some of the roughest panels that will ever have come out of any spray booth, let alone anything that Colin's done. So, but as I say, it's just to get one color and stop the rot. It has to be said that the finish on this shouldn't really be scrutinized as something that is representative of Ignition Motorsport's work because I did all the painting on this um, and I obviously did all of the prep work on this and this was something that Colin sort of broached with me early on just going, you know, it's not going to be a brilliant finish, right? And I went, yes, I, my, the finish I'm looking for here is blue possibly with a shine. And I am absolutely ecstatic with all of it. It's really, really nice, considering this was all done in the garage for prep, and I probably spent less than 100 hours on all of the panels for the front clip, including the blue paint going on them uh, in there, really, it's not that bad. You could have easily spent way more time on this, and I probably should have spent a lot more time on this if I was gonna get this absolutely perfect. There's still some marks in, but for now, it needs to be blue and about 20 foot good. So to start putting this back together, we've got a couple of pieces of trim that need to go on. Each of the arches have a little silver lip that goes around here. We've also already rebuilt the lights. Chris sat down and did this. And unfortunately, our big giant book of knowledge, unfortunately, doesn't have how these go back together. So I think these took them the better part of about three hours to rebuild the pair of them, which is quite, um, quite good feat when you think that there was no instructions to go along with them. So these will go on. We also need to remember the order that we took everything off. So we might have to watch back through our own video to see exactly which way they go together and then as Chris said we can put the bumper back on and the new grille which should look much much better because the old bumper had lots of crusty uh, rust where the chrome had come off. Now the only panel that's not here that I have done which I didn't do down at ignition is the scuttle panel cover and that's simply because I forgot. It was on the car and I thought it was completely welded on and it was part of the bodywork and I just have to sand it on the car, clean it off, paint it when I did the rest of the body. But no, it actually unscrews and pops straight off. So I took that one off, cleaned it down at home, and I just gave it a rough paint job over the top. And it's not looking too bad, all things considered. I did use the spray gun here rather than using a rattle can, and it has been lacquered on, but it's still not as nice as any of these panels that we did, but it will absolutely do to fill in the 20 foot good paint job. Do yourself a favor and learn from our mistakes. When you disassemble something, label the bolts and bag them up, because throwing them in a box means you have to sift through the whole thing and try and remember where each one comes from. We didn't. 
So we've got the first part of the lower valance in place that mounts onto these braces, three bolts that go down and they bolt corner sections in. So we can't put that all the way in properly until we've got the sides on. And this corner in particular needs some repair work to the marker light. Now the other one's in reasonably good condition, but this one, as you can see, once I take this last screw out, definitely took a hit, which is surprising considering it was the other side that seems to have had the impact on it and all of the new sheet metal and lots of bent parts on the front end of this car are, are on that side. So there's another bit out and uh, there's another bit out. So if we salvage the screws out of here. Wow, yep, that still had a lot of parts in. And hopefully without slicing my fingers open, I need to try and get this shattered bulb out, which, hmm, that's gonna be interesting. Please hold. But it did not hold. Well, it's definitely broken now. Wow, that just does not move, does it? So now once you've removed your bulb, you can try to fit the new one. Now I'm hoping again that this one isn't going to shatter as soon as I touch it. It shouldn't, it is a new bulb. but is probably gonna be a tolerance fit or it's gonna be the wrong size as a tolerance fit, which could be even worse. Don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. So now I've got the bulb out, or at least the bulb holder, what was left of the bulb. And I've come to a conclusion that this bulb is not gonna work. As much as it is exactly the right size, has the same pin orientation to lock it in place, it actually doesn't fit anywhere near the contacts. This is an outer contact and then a central pin. That's two contacts for the bulb. This actually has two discrete contacts that go into the socket and then clip into place. So this bulb is useless to me, but that doesn't mean that I can't put the new lens on at least to keep everything together. And there's no way I'm putting the old one back on. So I'll just uh, nip this one back up, gently fit this all in, because at least with the screws on the front, we can get into this relatively easily and fit a bulb later on. So with the lower valance all on, now we can start putting a couple of bits of nice shiny chrome on. Now we're just giving these a quick going over with uh, some polish. And these actually just wedge in across the top of the valance. So in order to hold this in place, we're gonna to have to put the wing on to bolt this up and through. So Chris is just gonna pass me the wing in. And I'm gonna try very hard to get it roughly in the right place from down here, which may or may not work. How's that your end? Let's give or take right. Okay. Right. Ah, the door is open and that is blocking me. So we've just put all of the top bolts in fairly loosely, but we've aligned it nicely and we had to do a little bit of percussive maintenance on one bolt hole here. It's obviously been tweaked at some point. It was just slewed back down the car. So when you try to put the bolt through, it was actually interfering with the door, but now the door opens nicely and it clears around the edge of the fender. So winner, winner. Now we've got three more of these much more aggressive holding bolts to go in and these just come up through the bottom. Now, granted, Chris did point out and I have completely forgotten to deal with one of the studs that we broke quite some time ago. So I now have to take this stud back out. Now I've got the wings on, the next piece to go on is the scuttle panel that goes across the top of here. Now I put up a couple of shorts quite a while ago, um, digging out all of the rubbish that was inside of here. There was so much gruff, just like dust and dirt and soil and leaves and decal, all sorts of, just all the way across the inside of here. I'm amazed it hasn't rotted all the way through, but I went through, cleaned it, painted it black. So it's all nicely sealed. It's been outside for quite some time now. It's good probably six to eight weeks since I actually did that uh, and it's still looking reasonably good so it doesn't seem to have fared badly at all so this can now go on although I do want to adjust that slightly which is the washer 
Now, uh, one second, if you just lift your side up a second, Chris, I can just tuck this one in here, and then this sits down. Now, before we screw this in fully, we just get this over these two pins, because we have to put a rubber seal in underneath this side, which I think I left over here. I did. This is the rear bonnet seal. So this goes on underneath this lip at the front and sits up. And this just directs water off the back of the bonnet, down anything that falls through here, out to the side, which then drains out the side of the car. And this is just held in place by the screws that hold this down. It just pinches down, goes straight through and fits in. And these are like 3 8 um, body screws, really coarse threads. They just drop straight down. And this also goes into the wing at this edge. And then once that's in, we can tighten all of the wing bolts up. Other bits and that's weirdly tricky. impression that this should have gone in Earlier. before the headlights. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I get it. Now somehow until today we hadn't really noticed this like melted looking section of wire wrap back here and we're figuring before we throw the hood back on and kind of it's all up in our way here and gets in the way of us fixing this loom we're just going to sling it out over the side of the car and rewrap it real quick unfortunately being knocking on for 60 years old now it's really really brittle it's not going to unwind and reel off nicely it's just going to come off in little flakes so it's kind of going to be a, a pain in the bum but we're going to pick all of that off rewrap it in new tape and then hopefully this will be nice and clean and not going to you know sort of fracture everywhere and just generally look a bit mank like that. So we've just had to kind of pivot a little bit. If you saw the short that we uploaded on the day that we were shooting this, uh, you'll have noticed that our wiring harness is a little bit cooked. Um, what we saw as a little bit of uh, like melted and bubbled insulation up at the back row, which in fairness kind of should have tipped us off to something horrible having happened inside, actually became a completely screwed entire segment of wiring loom. There are three wires here that got down to bare copper on the inside where the insulation was completely melted off. Uh, there's this little bundle here, which I assume was once upon a time connected to this little wire here. Uh, generally, we just have no idea what's going on. We need to just redo the whole thing. So we're going to go pour over the wiring diagrams for this and just remake this entire section, which really isn't what we wanted to be doing. But we haven't really got a lot of other options right now. Well, the wiring loom kind of puts a spanner in the works for the rest of the build, at least for this weekend, because we can't, well, we could put the bonnet on, but it is inevitably going to be in our way when we try to do this and check out any other wiring as well as the other side. Now, the other side looks okay because it's not crispy, for want of a better word, and it's not wound up in lots and lots of extra tape where it's expanded and broken away. So in order to uh, feel a little bit better about what we've done in the engine bay, we decided to give it a proper clean. So we've scrubbed over the bell housing, the top, and we've mopped out loads of the dirt. It's actually looking reasonably good, although it has taken a lot of the paint off that I put on in the engine bay all that time ago. I think but, um, proper clean might be a bit far. This isn't like a Chris fix super clean. This was a, it was a good hit with a pressure washer, but it was... Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's probably fair. It's, it's a lot cleaner than it was, uh, and we've cleaned out the valley underneath, uh, or rather in the top of the um, inlet manifold. Uh, at some point we are going to have to pull the carb off and have a look in there, because with the weather and everything else, they've probably got water into the cylinders at some point, which is just horrendous. And I really don't want to have to do that, but if it has, that's just another one of those. Yay! Screwed myself. So, if you want to see how this build continues and you haven't already, you really should subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification so you'll see when we put up shorts like we did today on this debacle over here. And if you want to help us pay for the mistakes we've been making, which we do quite a lot to be honest, yeah. you can jump on shop.battlebox.show and buy some of our merch that Aid is wearing and I, as usual, am not. We've now got long sleeve t-shirts which are perfect for the coming winter. It's actually very nice. It's, yeah, it's, it's nice mid-October it? yeah. here, it's like 20 degrees and these are really good. I'm, uh, I'm liking it. I think long sleeves are a good compromise, isn't it? You can always yeah. like, kind of tune it a bit to uh, exactly. conditions. 
We've also got Patreon. You can jump on there and support us from as little as a dollar a month. Five dollars or more gets you access to our Discord server where you can talk to us about your projects, get little live updates here and there on what we're up to because we post in there from yeah. time to time while we're working. And see all of the mistakes that we make in nearly real time. And there are many. And there are many. So yeah, if you haven't, as I say, subscribe to the channel, check out the links, and we'll see you when we do more on this giant blue boat. Thank you.